Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode seven of the Hungry People Podcast. It is your boy, Michael Patrick Buckley, and I'm here with my wonderful co-host, AJ Dybka. On today's episode, AJ and I are going to be talking about exercise. AJ, why don't you give us a little, little preview of what today's episode is going to be about? Yeah, today we're going to talk about exercise and how actually easy it is to implement some simple habits so that you get all of the benefits and you don't have to overwhelm, overwhelm yourself and burn yourself out. We're also going to touch on topics like, uh, like I just said, overtraining, uh, warming up, cooling down, what exercise maybe is best for you in your stage of life, health, or what just how busy you are working in all the factors and leaving it pretty broad. But I think that you guys are really going to enjoy this one. It's something MP and I are very, not only passionate about, I think, mm -hmm. no, we are very knowledgeable, especially in certain specific areas. Totally. So MP, how you doing, man? Yeah, AJ, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Uh, You're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. So are you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I wanted to get started. Is there, is there any form of exercise that you think we should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that we're keeping everything steady and stable and functioning on a, right. on a, on a foundation level? Well, see, people can be very overwhelmed because they know exercise is good, but they are right. working like crazy. They already don't feel good. Right. They're, a majority of people are only focused on diet. So a lot of this, uh, a lot of exercise gets thrown to the, to the side. Mm -hmm. Or some people do the opposite. That's all they focus on and they're still not getting the results they want. Mm -hmm. So I would say that moving in general, just moving during the day is just mm -hmm. essential, just like it is to use the bathroom and to sleep. We need to move our body, not just because we want to pump our lymphatic system. That's very important right? because it doesn't have a pump like the heart, but we also need to pump our heart. We need to give it an assistance and we need to mm -hmm. strain ourselves a little bit. We need to increase oxygen. We need to move around for the fluidity of our joints. Not only this, it's really good for our posture and it's going to help us sleep later. And then the better we sleep, the more energy we have to exercise. And yeah, more right. Potential mental energy to actually choose healthier food. Right. So they all, every, all, everything we discuss in here goes together. You're not going to mm -hmm. isolate one thing and not have a, and have a, an amazing result. You have to include it all, but you have to start somewhere. Totally. Yeah. I, I think just moving your body in general is the most important place to start. And, I think when it comes time to the end of the day, how you're talking about sleep, maybe if you are someone who is struggling with sleeping, maybe moving your body more and exercising more. Yeah. I mean, you could just say, oh, that's tiring you out a little more. And that's going to uh, maybe put you to bed a little sooner than. <laughs> yeah. Just having a little bit more structure and you feel good about yourself. The more, mm -hmm. the more confidence you have, or the more, um, the more proud of yourself that you are, it's easier to also lead into other good things. I know that when I was staying with you mm -hmm. on the days where we did wake up and do those morning walks around right. that park, that awesome right. park, um, I was way more likely and it was way easier to fall asleep if we chose to go to bed earlier. Whereas totally. we didn't really do much. It's, it's so much easier just to stay up. Yeah. See, I just don't understand how people can go throughout their day and not even think to even go on a walk. And I can understand there's people and they're doing this and they, 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 they're working two jobs and they're going here, they're right. going there, you know, they're all over the place. They have a family, they have kids, they got to go grocery yeah. shopping and then trying to fit in working out there can definitely be tough. I just think that the people who are, who don't have much to do maybe in their life or maybe they're younger or uh, maybe they're just lazy. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know where it is where they don't even think to maybe go work out or go to the gym, you know, but honestly, I, th I think people, once they realize, and they maybe look at themselves in the mirror, like, okay, maybe I do need to start making a change. And it right. doesn't have to be like some crazy change where you got to start running marathons, but uh, even just a simple change of walking more can just be such a huge foundation. So AJ, can we, can we touch on walking here just to kind of get everything started? I know we are, I know we've already been talking. <laughs> uh, for a certain period of time, but, um, yeah, yeah, no, if we can no. just, if we can talk about walking, uh, right. I think, I think that, I think walking is, is just, it's, it's, it's the best place to start for anybody. It's number one. It's number one, you know, and, and you even taught me that, that it's just, it's the best foundation for it's, your exercise. It's a, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, so just just based off one thing that you said, because you were like kind of going into you don't really understand. I don't know if they're closing. <laughs> Will you pause it, please? I had to move location because the place was closing, but um, thank you for your patience. So what I was saying is I want to address what you said about you kind of having some confusion about why certain people don't exercise because everyone knows that there's benefits. Everyone mm -hmm. knows that they'll feel better and it's good mm -hmm. for them and they'll live longer. But my answer to that would be it's really easy to make good decisions when you have things already in motion. Mm -hmm. But I find that the less that I've done, like in my life, if there are time periods where I've done less, mm -hmm. it's so much harder even to do a minimum of something. You have mm -hmm. like very little momentum. Mm -hmm. And if anything, the less I worked, the less I also wanted to do everything else. Oh, wow. Now that's not everyone's issue because some yeah. people have so much to do that they want that extra even 10 minutes of sleep. They're not like, right. I'm gonna wake up and walk. They're like, I am working like crazy. My kids were up all night, mm -hmm. you know, so. You know, we got to come at this from a place of understanding that mm -hmm. not everyone has the same way of living. <clears throat> yeah, no, totally. I, I see exactly what you're saying there. And um, it's funny because I actually, <laughs> I actually thought of this today and I said, wow, like, I feel like I can just keep going and going and going and not eat. But then once I eat, I yep. just want to keep eating. But then if I don't eat, I'm not hungry and I can just keep going of not eating. Yeah. So <laughs> the reason why I say that is because I think it relates to this example that you gave. And it's like, oh, well, you're lazy. Let's just keep being lazier. Screw it. Let's just. Right. And, I, and I've noticed with myself that when I have nothing to do during a day and I haven't worked out yet and it gets to that later part of the day, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't want to do, I don't even want to go work out. Like, I just want to, I just want to keep being lazy and just keep chilling. But when I get up and the first thing I do during that day is like work out, you know, or even, or even if I work out during some point in the morning, I feel so much more productive. And I just, I'm so much more likely to just have, have, have better energy for the rest of the day. And, um, I don't know if you've experienced something like that as well. Yeah. I, uh, that's kind I of definitely how I see it. experienced that. It's like, for me, habits build on each other. I'm never just, um, I'm never just like stagnant. It's more like I'm, right. I'm doing less and less or I'm doing more and more. It's mm -hmm. very difficult. I'm very one way or the other naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, not that it couldn't beat that, but it's, it's just more challenging. Mm -hmm. I find very little excitement in doing just the baseline, mm -hmm. <laughs> even though that's where I would probably see the most success. It's right. challenging. Right. But I find that, um, so if we step away from exercise for a moment and we mm -hmm. even talk about just progression and when I was working doing sales, I got really good. And I went from working six days a week and I was able to condense all my sales into one day. Well, wow, I impressive. was making more, I was making more, yeah, I was making more money than I ever had before even working a lot. And what ends up happening when that's something like that happens is now I just dread that that one day of work is coming. <laughs> Dude, so I like, know oh, exactly. I only, have, I only have three more days off. <laughs> but if I work five days a week, it's like, oh, cool, I'm off for two days. Right, it's such yeah. an interesting thing. It's Dude, like that yeah. conservation. I don't know what it is. I, is it just the human? Is it just the human genome? You know, is it just? Is there something just wrong with all of us? You know, we're wired. We're all wired this. The, the right. we're all wired the same, but we're all wired the wrong way. You know, I I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know. Conserve I don't energy. It. I think that's yeah. the most common thing. With yeah. Genes. yeah. But I'm sorry. You asked me a specific question. I don't know if I answered it because I jumped off topic. Do you remember what you asked? Um, I know it was just talking about walking. Oh, you were asking about walking. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Just because so, I know that when you and I talk, we've had discussions about uh, just building the foundation for your, for your legs and even for the, the ligaments and the tissue and your knees and your calves and your quads and all of that, you know, and, and right. just an example that you gave me that really, that really stuck true and just made such an impact on me was that, Hey, would you, who'd you rather have a marathon runner who has been walking every day for the last 10 years? And then they start training or would you rather have someone who just like, he, he might be an athlete, but maybe isn't a runner, uh, for him to start doing a marathon, you know? Yeah. And I mean, 
who knows? Depending on the person, maybe they could just do that. Maybe they could just poof and sure, be a marathon runner, yeah. you know, but, uh, but I feel like the chances of injury are much higher than the person right. who has built up that foundation for their legs. And then they started the training. And, and I'm not saying that like, Oh, you have to walk 10 years. <laughs> you have to walk every day for 10 years, 10 miles a day to like run a marathon, you know? Um, like even me, I, I don't even think I would do that myself, but, uh, I, I do think that, um, someone who does that is, is just next level, you know? And, and for me in my life, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm moving a lot. I mean, you could say I'm always walking cause I'm, I'm always moving. I'm biking a ton. I'm working out four or five, right. six times a week, you know, playing baseball, um, so I feel like I do for the most part, have a pretty good foundation for my legs set already. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you've yeah, you, you're, yeah. MP, you're very fit. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't be questioning your fitness uh, with the walking. I think the example I was giving you was just like, imagine a person who prioritized walking. Of course, uh-huh. it's not about every single day for 10 years, but a majority of the time, imagine a person who walks one, two, three, five miles daily. Yeah. And imagine the impact that's having on you biologically. Imagine what that's having on an effect on you hormonally and physically. So the example with someone transitioning into doing more distance running and things like that, instead of oh, worrying about being an athlete and then jumping into it, it's like you're setting yourself up for such a foundation. You are using all those feet muscles over and over. Mm-hmm. You are stretching your ligaments. You are uh, using your knees in a gentle way and you're building the strength of the ligaments joints so that when you get more into maybe a little more ground and pounds mm-hmm. over a long distance, now your body's a little, it's more prepared for that versus mm-hmm. that shock treatment that most of us give. We right. give three months in the gym and then we plop out or we train for one marathon and we stop That's doing it. it. Yeah. But just imagine the person, just think about it for a second that walks every day, let's say three miles for four years. They do it before they go to work. They wake up, maybe they brush their teeth and they go for a walk before they do anything else. They Mm -hmm. do it just them. They don't listen to anything. They go for a walk. Imagine the the change that would have as an accumulation over those five years, constantly immediately getting out of the house and getting fresh air, Mm -hmm. immediately getting blood flow, immediately having a more erect posture, immediately having a little more structure. And then you're going back and you're having this water and this food that is more bioavailable. The, the hydration is now easily mm-hmm. more uh, able to penetrate the cell. The same right. with the food. You're going to absorb the nutrients. You're definitely going to help with your uh, insulin and how effective it is at getting sugar into the cell. Totally. And, and over time, you're accumulating. You know, walking doesn't have re- so much residual impact and negativity. Yeah. Like cycling and walking are such low impact. They're so healthy. Mm-hmm. You're breathing deeper. It's good for your heart. It's good for your brain. There's really not that many downsides if you can do it in, in the health, you know, in your health. Generally, you're healthy mm-hmm. enough to do it. Right. But I just, I think that it's so underappreciated because everyone that's heavier tries to work really hard. Mm-hmm. And it's really hard yeah. to work out even regular if you're overweight. Yeah. It's extra hard. So you're not only working harder than the average person, you're also pushing it so hard and if we can really adopt some of these habits and make them kind of concrete, simple things. I know it's, like I said, for me, the swings are a bit larger, mm-hmm. but if I know that when I do that consistently, I also have better structure around everything else in my life. And mm-hmm. I also have that time to myself where I can just think and really process my thoughts and emotions. Cause a lot yeah. of us don't have that time. We go from uh, taking care of the kids to going to our job, to coming home and, you know, being with our partners and then we watch a movie and then we go to bed with our phone listening to something yeah, right. and that decompression is vital it's so yeah. important and whenever i actually prioritize it oh it's nice good, good yeah results yeah 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 uh even just this conversation we're having now it's it's just motivating me to get up early and get, and start my day with a walk and i and i know how how life-changing that is you know, yeah. when I can, when you, when, when you can do that, even just like getting up, well, even, even just getting up and, and having, no, even just getting up and having good habits in general, that's so important. And, um, and recently I haven't been able to do that. I, uh, I've been staying up, I've been staying up a little later, 
than normal uh, than I would like to. And I haven't been able to, to get up as early as I'd like and, and do those good habits. Um, but it is what it is. But anyways, anyways, AJ, there is something that, uh, that you, that you mentioned there. And I think that that's a great segue into the next topic. And you were saying how there's people who are, who are overweight and they're like, I, I feel, I feel the overall idea of weight loss is, um, like doing more, like working out harder and, yeah. and putting less in less food in, less calories, like more energy, uh, eat less. And I, I think for some people that might work. Um, I just, I, 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 I question, uh, I guess from like an injury standpoint or a standpoint of like actually, um, getting hurt, getting hurt, you know, and hurting yourself. If that's, if that's the best way to do it, you know, or if it is, or if it's better to just start with walking and to start really watching what you put into your body. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if you had, if you had any thoughts on that or if you wanted to create sort of a, a discussion around that. Yeah. Um, the thing with weight, it's, it, there's so many factors involved. And if mm -hmm. you have someone who's eating a lot and they're eating really unhealthy and they're going and working out really hard, they're, they're not necessarily going to, no matter how hard they work, they're not going to see the results they want mm -hmm. because part of the pro the big problem is what you eat. The, I would say the biggest thing with weight loss is dietary, not mm -hmm. all the time. And of course there's other factors involved. There's hormones. There's all these other things that come into play and exercise is vital for burning fat. I'm not saying it isn't, but right. it's really how it's really hard to out train a, a horrible diet. So for these very people, difficult. <laughs> yeah, for these people that you see and they're training so hard and they're and they're feeling so defeated, but they're not looking at the diet and they're not or they're or like you said, they're restricting to a point that's completely unsustainable. Right. You can't work out like crazy and eat fifteen hundred calories. Right. You have to be able to nourish yourself because if your body's nourished, it will also burn fat more efficiently as well. Mm -hmm. I think that there needs to stop being a trend of the restriction combined with the intense workout. Especially. Yeah. Like if you are someone who truly believes that you should be eating less, you should step back. You should need to exercise still, but you need to step back from that intensity. Now, if you feel as though you're nourished and you can train really hard and you know, you'll get better results and mm -hmm. you'll get seeing them a little faster then I think that's probably ideal, mm -hmm. but the, the blend of them is so important. A lot of people think that, uh, I, I, we might disagree here. A lot of people think cardio is the best way to lose weight. And I completely disagree. No. Yeah. I actually, I actually agree with that. I, I don't think, okay. it's the, I, don't, I don't think it's the best way either. I, I think it's, I think it's sort of unsustainable in, in a way to just say, Oh, just go out and, and just run or and bike. Uh, and you're going to lose all this weight, which you, you can definitely do that. And even myself, like when I'm, if I'm biking a ton and I'm carving up, I mean, like the, the weight will honestly fall off. Like I'll have to eat a lot more just to ensure that I'm keeping it on, you know, or even work in some more fat and protein. Um, just because like, I will, I will lose weight if I, if I, if I bike too much. Um, right. And we're but, talking like 50, 80 mile bike rides sometimes. It's not yeah. like, you're yeah. riding a bike five miles. Right. Right. Yeah. Of I course, guess when you not... get into, when you get into those distances, it becomes, especially as your metabolism increases and your system is working better and you're hydrated. Mm -hmm. Now it's easy. You can pretty much eat whatever you want. Yeah. And you'll probably feel fine and you'll as well, uh, keep a ma maintain a weight or you might have to eat more just to maintain weight because you're burning that fuel as quickly as it's coming in. Totally. See, I, I think my thoughts on this are, are that if you really are trying to lose weight and you want to move your body more and incorporate more exercise into your daily life, you have to find what works best for you and what you like the most. You know, I've heard people who lose weight just by doing more yoga and all they're doing, they're standing in a certain position, you know, right. and they're, and they're moving their body in, but they're staying stationary. They're not like doing all these crazy H I H A or hit trainings, you know, yeah, and right. they're not, they're not trying to run marathons. They're not doing burpees and all that crap. Yeah. They're just, they're keeping it simple. And I, I think another form of exercise that kind of gets overlooked too is dancing, like going to dance class and stuff. And I, and I think 
if people, if they want to move their body more, but maybe they, they, they don't want to go to the gym and they don't want to run. I think, I think dancing is, is awesome. And I think even there, I think is, is a way to help, help lose some weight, you know, but my biggest thing is, is consistency and sustainability. So yeah, I think you can take a person and they could lose weight for a certain time period um, by doing all this running and biking and working out and CrossFit and this and that. But is that sustainable for them? Are they going to put that weight back on over the coming years? Is that going to happen? And I think you see that with a lot of people. And I know with me in my life, I just, I love exercising and I love moving my body so much that it's just, it's never, it's not going to stop for me. I'm always going to be doing something. I'm always going to be working out. I'm always going to be biking. I'm going to be running. I'm going to be, I'm going to be playing baseball. I'm going to be coaching. I'm, 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 I'm always going to be moving my body in some way that it's, for me, it's sustainable for some people. That's like, oh my gosh, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine looking at you and sitting like working out three days a week. I just couldn't imagine it. I, I wouldn't even want to do that, you know? So I feel like you have to fit it into your life as best as possible for you. You know, you can't just look at someone on YouTube who's lost 75 pounds because he biked, you know, it doesn't mean that that's going to, it's going to work for you, you know? So I know you, I think you wanted to say, you want to chime in there. Um, and I kept talking. <laughs> I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, so let's, uh, let's start, let, let, let's talk about, um, Oh, I remember actually. Oh, okay. I do think that we should do an episode on weight loss specifically and yeah. losing fat, but yeah, there's totally. something I want to address because we were just on the subject of well, I just, overweight. Yeah. Well, I, I just think that exercise and weight loss, it's just, it's so correlated that you kind of, you don't have to bring it up and it just, it just kind of comes up, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I just want to say like, there's an initial like people don't even realize how much weight retention they're having. Mm -hmm. I, I might've mentioned this in the water episode, but for people that are a lot heavier, the reason why it's so important to really change your diet, like especially if you're struggling with the exercise is because if you are lowering the sodium, you're upping the hydration and you're eating a bit cleaner, that takes a bit of a burden off your, your organs. Now, all of a sudden, you release a lot of that excess salt, which holds mm -hmm. a lot of water weight. And now you'll be able to move more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So for the people, I just want to exaggerate a little, or I want to um, acknowledge that for the people that are working really hard and they're not focusing on the food, the food can literally take 10, 15, 20 pounds off someone who's pretty heavy, just in sodium retention. And wow. now the exercise is so much more efficient and it's easier and you don't feel like you want to, you know, jump over the bridge. <laughs> so, so in that, in that example that you gave there, um, is it kind of like they're already eating so much salt and they're just basically replacing the salt <laughs> that's possibly coming out through their urine that their body is just holding on to it all. And it's not really, it's not really getting rid of anything. Um, or not anything, but it's not, it's not getting rid of the excess salt. So if they stop putting the salt in, then their body's able to release more of the salt without more coming in. And then in that regard too, they're also going to be releasing more water. And I know people probably have a lot of water weight on them. You could say, is that yeah. basically part, what it is? part of that water weight is because of the salt. Yeah. It's not that you have to cut salt out completely. It's just a lot of people don't even realize that they're having four five, six, seven thousand, ten thousand 10,000 milligrams of sodium in a day. <laughs> I mean, you go and get a pizza, it's going to be a couple thousand milligrams. I know you and I can, could put away a pizza. No, uh, no I did problem. It. I did it two nights ago. <laughs> exactly. And like the average pizza is going to have, yeah. I'm sure, up to 4,000 milligrams of sodium. Yeah, totally. And the thing is, it's not that the kidneys can't urinate it all out. It's just that the amounts that are being taken in, the kidneys aren't going to process that fast enough. It's, right. it's almost like dumping a, you know, a shipping container worth of dirt on your lawn every morning you can work all day <laughs> moving it with a shovel and a wheelbarrow but if it comes every morning eventually it's just building up a little storage. yeah right that's a great example they, actually so if you lower it to a normal amount and you take in enough water and you, right. sweating especially uh gets rid of excess salt so you can really mm -hmm. lose a lot of weight fast i can but sometimes i can like, can like taste it <laughs> if i'm nice. eating a little more salt than usual but good <laughs> But uh, yeah, you don't even have to just completely cut it out. And you'll see quickly that because you have less fluid retention, 
it's easier to breathe. It's easier to move. And you'll overall have a more pleasant experience. Totally. Awesome. And you'll also lose weight, which is your goal anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, so I wanted to touch on just the workouts that you prefer to do or uh, that you like to do, or I know that you are, uh, that you are a coach and that you do train, train athletes. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to touch on, on any of that at all. Um, and then, and then I can give a little bit about the workouts that I like to do. Yeah, actually I would, I would love for you to go first. Yeah. So, um, since I just spoke. Yeah, totally. Totally. Um, so I, uh, I'm super into calisthenics and, um, I guess when you, when you think of the word calisthenics, you might just think like jumping jacks. You might think of, um, even just walking or stretching or doing leg raises. Uh, but when I think of it, I think of more like doing pull-ups, push-ups, dips, uh, handstands, uh, muscle ups, planches, um, exercises like that. And, uh, I talked about this in my, in my, in episode three of my story, how we have our warrior challenge. And for that challenge, you do squats, you do push-ups, you do pull-ups, you do sit-ups, and then there's a sit and reach. And for me, my thought process for training for that was just to do all that. Like, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do push-ups. Let's do pull-ups. Let's do sit-ups. Let's do all this stuff, squats. And I just fell in love with calisthenics and calisthenics workouts. And, um, ever since then, legit, that was three, four years ago. I've just, I've been so into it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'll tell you what, it's been, it's been an up and down process for me with calisthenics. Um, matter of fact, I, I was going crazy on my dips. I was really, I really wanted to get my dips up my, my repetitions for my dips. Cause that's one of the, Mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest, uh, parts of the calisthenics world is actually being able to like rep out and do as many reps as you possibly can. So even now that's what I'm working on with my pushups and pull-ups and whatnot. Um, but before I did my first juice fast, I was doing like 40, 45, getting close to 50 dips in a set. So I was like, I was crunching them out. I was doing, and this is bar. This is, this is like actual dips on a, on a, on a machine, you know, uh, not just like tricep dips, but like chest dips. And I felt like so powerful and so strong. And then I went on my juice fast and I just like lost all motivation to work out. And yeah, yeah, I, I felt good. I felt, I felt great. I had good energy, but I had like no motivation to go to the gym or move my body. And it just kind of went downhill from there in regards to my, uh, my strength with calisthenics. And honestly, ever since then, I've been, I've been working on getting that back. Uh, I haven't been as focused on the dips, but more focused on the pushups. Um, actually, and I, I know I said this in the, in episode three, but since March 9th, I've done a hundred pushups every day and I'm actually working. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks man. Um, I've actually worked in a uh, hundred, a hundred body weight squats every day too. And I know for, uh, for some people that might seem too extreme for other people, that's like not enough, but similar to how we were talking with the, with the walking and how that just creates such a great foundation for your, for yourself, for your legs, for your knees, for your body. Um, the way I see that is just, I'm working on gaining that foundation back for my chest and for my, um, for my squats as well. Uh, and I just want to keep pumping them out and, I know that in this calisthenics world, most guys just like go and go and go. And it's, it's every day they're doing a thousand reps, like every other day. And it's just like, it can be a lot. And, um, I I don't know how, I don't know how they do it. I I'm sure like most of the time, most of these people, this is like their lives, their lives are calisthenics. So, so I give them a lot of credit. Um, and my life obviously is, is totally, totally different than that. I'm not just out there repping every day. Um, but it is, it is a goal of mine and a dream of mine to like be in a calisthenics competition and be able to just to rep out all, a crazy amount of pushups, a crazy amount of dips, crazy amount of bodyweight squats, crazy amount of pull-ups, you know, in a certain time period. And, and, uh, I just, I don't know. It's, 
it, it's going to happen and I'm going to get there and I'm going to keep working till it happens. Uh, Luke and that's Cronin why... told me that he's done 90 pull-ups uh, when he was when in the military. He did like 90 sh- sh- de- uh, dead hang pull-ups. Holy shit. I mean, who knows if it's true. Or not. <laughs> like in one I mean, he, set? This man, is, this man is 70 and he can do like 10 Superman push-ups, no problem. And that's I remember insane. you tried, right? You and Cody tried to do it. Oh, like, uh, yeah. Nope. I, yeah, that's that's very difficult. Yeah, he, he is a maniac. Like, <laughs> that's pretty nuts. Yeah, yeah Luke, that's actually, that's really impressive. I, I've actually seen videos of him doing some crazy amount of, um, amount of Superman push-ups or whatever. Um, yeah. But really, my mindset has changed uh, over the past couple months and even the past year with uh, my workouts. I do use weights for training, and I do think the weight training helps bring back some of the muscle and helps build the muscle. Uh, mm-hmm. I can do it. I can, I, I can build the muscle all body weight if I really wanted to, but just I, I just don't have the the mental capacity right now to to do all the reps. If I'm being honest, it's just, it's just not there for me. I'd rather just lower the reps and do more strength training with the weights just because when I go in the gym and it's like, okay, MP, you got to do a thousand reps of pushups. You know how mentally exhausting that can be just thinking like, Holy shit. I had to do a thousand reps of push. Like, you know how long that could take. (laughs) And honestly, I could probably get a thousand reps in under 50 minutes, but, um, it's even still it's so you I, do a thousand push-ups in 50 minutes i i could probably okay we can go under 55 minutes. have you done it i i actually i think i've written it down actually i've done it before um let so me see done, my, i've never i've never heard someone do a thousand push-ups. <laughs> um you're in Hannibal. <laughs> so i've done on january 16th of 2020 I did a thousand push-ups on a bar. So like I have a, a bar. It's just like a, it's just like I put 10 pounds on it and then I just do push-ups on the bar and I did a thousand and 51 minutes and 54 seconds. Um, I could, I could probably do that again. Um, that is impressive. I mean, thank you. Uh, the thing is like, if, if I worked on that more, it, it get even better, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't want, I don't want to call myself a, like a, I was going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say it, but, uh, like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not like weak minded or anything. I just simply, I, I just don't want to do that many reps right now, you know? Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll get it back and I'll start repping out. Um, I did, I did 300 or 350 the other day. So, um, Ooh. it's, it, it's coming back slowly, but surely, sh- slowly, but surely I'll be repping out a thousand. My goal is to do like a thousand a week, every week, if I can. Just let I me mean, like one one day a week. I want to get a thousand pushups. Right. Um, I, I don't want to. I don't want to like think that I have to do a thousand every day. You know, but I I do want to work myself up and work my body up to be able to do one thousand pushups every day and make that a commitment every week for the rest of my life. I that's that's definitely a goal of mine. So I uh, I will get there and I'm gonna keep working until it happens. So. Um. Looking forward to it. Yeah, thanks. So I, 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 uh, I talked a lot there about <laughs> some, somewhat of my, I, I guess I, uh, I, I didn't touch on like, oh, Monday I do chest, Tuesday I do back, but I, um, I like to do one leg day a week of like leg training in the gym with weights. Um, but I'm usually I bike a ton. I haven't been running at all actually. Uh, but. I actually usually bike to the gym. So <laughs> when I mm-hmm. bike to the gym, like, in the summer, at least just because it's so nice out, I feel, I don't feel like riding, driving my car. Uh, so I usually get about six and a half to seven miles on the bike when I bike to the gym and then I get my workout right. on too. And then I'll do biking outside of that. And I mean, in just in general, biking itself is a leg workout. Uh, I remember last year I was, biking a ton because leo was leo is here we were biking a lot my friend casey we were biking a lot my friend blaze we were biking a lot and dave um i go my leo yeah whatever is whatever his name is we'll change it tomorrow um <laughs> <laughs> what's up leo i hope you're watching <laughs> yeah um and i remember just going in the gym and i haven't squatted for a while and i remember like i put on 225 and i know for 
for a lot of people, 225 is super easy, you know, and it used to be so easy for me. I used to rip out like 20 reps, 225, but it that was the highest I ever did, but I was 150 pounds. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, that but was more than half, more than my body weight. That's impressive, AJ. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I was never like getting in there and doing that weight. And I was like, wow, this actually doesn't feel as heavy as I thought. And I just, and it just, it just comes back into that like constant movement of the legs, even with the walking, with the biking, you know, I'm constantly keeping that muscle activated and keeping the muscle worked. So it's not just like going flat and losing its, its strength. Uh, and that's why, that's why I'm all about going, 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 going. And, and I really, I just don't want to lose the strength. I really don't want to. I'm going to work my ass off to keep this for as long as possible. So anyways, I've, I've talked enough about, um, about my no, workouts. Good. So if you, uh, if you had anything to touch on. The, yeah, I was going to go it. into, uh, not necessarily my workouts, but more kind of the background I have with fitness. And I've always been in the fitness. I've always been a lean weight and mm-hmm. into soccer and running. And that was my background. I was a cross country and track runner. And then I did coach track and field at my high school, Mm -hmm. um, pre COVID and stuff. And it was really, it was really nice because I finally got to implement all the little, uh, nuggets that I built over the years, um, learning from different runners and coaches and stuff. And I found as though the, um, what, but because I'm working with runners, they're already lean and fit. And it's such a different, uh, dynamic than someone who's trying to like lo- lose weight mm-hmm. and lose fat, but build muscle. And it's actually, I think so much simpler. I know I brought it up earlier, so much simpler for people to see progress. If they're not doing tons of cardio, people focus on the stair masters and they focus on walking like really hard and you know, all the other things they're trying really difficult to do that, but you're not, they're not seeing the weight loss. So maybe mm-hmm. it's the diet, but I've noticed that despite the diet, when people work out, it seems as though it's way more beneficial. And what mm-hmm. I mean by a workout is whether it's calisthenics, which is usually pretty hard for someone who's heavier. Mm-hmm. So that's why I would recommend more weights. Totally. I but it's very simple. This is the program that I use no matter who I train, no matter what fitness level. It just, you just, it's not that the training changes. It's just the weights and the reps and the momentums. They all change, but the workout routine itself does not. It just evolves. Mm -hmm. and it's you warm up for at least 10 minutes you're going to get your heart rate up Mm -hmm. then you're going to warm your body up by stretching for all the people that are against stretching say stretching get you you know hurt you and all this (laughs) is nonsense this is complete nonsense so your body's warmed up and good blood flow and good oxygen now we're going to stretch out and really open everything up you do that for about another 10 minutes then you actually get into the workout so you're already 20 minutes in you haven't worked out yet Everyone just goes in and starts lifting. Right. <laughs> Maybe they lift lighter, but, you know, we're trying to get the best results here. So after 20 minutes, we actually start the workout. And not only did we do our warm up and stretch, now we still warm up with the weights. We warm up to the weight that we want to be lifting. And we'll do that for 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. I don't set training sessions for an hour. I set it for usually an hour and a half because I like to give them the full experience. And it takes a little more time. So if you're doing 30 minutes uh, for a workout, you're already 50 minutes in. And usually it'll be around 30 to 45. It changes because I'll pick up on the cues that they're giving me of how they feel that day. Sometimes they feel great, go a little longer. Sometimes they're really struggling. 30 minutes is perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. So at that point, what we do from there is is we do a cool down. So we're going to now get our heart rate up, but really it's helping it to settle at a normal level. So we're starting getting the heart rate up a little bit and then we're the cool down gets easier and easier as time goes on. And that's about 10 minutes Mm -hmm. from there. We'll now do the final stretch. So everything gets stretched out. And then actually I added in a new, that's what I've been doing for years. The thing that I do now as well, if we have the time and the space is I have them lay on like a mat or yoga mat or somewhere they feel comfortable And at least for five minutes, they just close their eyes and they soak it all in. Now in yoga, they do that because they're like, that's the part where you absorb, you know, the, you absorb the benefits, but really it's like you earned that moment of rest. Yeah. Otherwise you would be running out of that gym and doing all the stuff we said earlier, running all the errands, stopping at the store, being in traffic. 
you get to enjoy yourself. You, it's hard to just lay down and rest for so many of us because we're so mm -hmm. antsy. Right. But when you've worked out hard and you put in a fair game, when you lay down, you earned it. And it is a moment of peace that mm -hmm. is the favorite part of everyone. And you really do get all those accumulation benefits. Then you get up and you're like, okay, like you get your water in or you get whatever and you're, you're feeling good. This is the way that I see fitness, but with if you compared it to nutrition. So with nutrition, there's so many people saying so many things. I think it's important to nourish the body so that you have the best output. This is the best way I found to take someone who's a complete novice, who's never worked out, and in three months, they can go from benching the bar just by itself to benching 135 pounds consistently, good form, no problem, feeling so good about themselves. Awesome. Because a lot of people are showing up at the gym, they're feeling embarrassed that they're starting with 100 pounds and they're lifting all crap. And, you know, a lot of people get lucky. A lot of people work out really hard and they don't get an injury and they get to do that for years. But eventually, chances are these people are going to injure themselves. But when you take that approach, you can take our parents. You could take someone who's, you know, just getting into working out, who's heavier, no matter who you are. You can follow this very simple formula because everyone can warm up. The types of warm-ups will change depending upon the person, uh -huh. but everyone can warm up because someone could go for a walk and that gets their heart going enough because they're so unfit, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can have someone who's very fit like yourself and I'd be having you do all kinds of little exercises, but it will really get you going. Right. So the, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's like a formula that you could just plug in for the person that you're dealing with. And this is going to really increase muscle, which is going to make it much easier to decrease fat. Right. And then you're going to feel more confident. You know, think of all the people who lose a lot of weight biking. Of course, they're going to feel good about themselves, but you don't feel as macho and confident, especially as a male, compared to if you're getting a little bit more Getting yeah, a little more toned up. Games. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Yeah, no you, doubt. Stand a little, you stand a little taller and you get yeah, more into it. Totally. It doesn't, you still enjoy biking. Right. But this, is, this <laughs> has been profound. Actually, uh, honestly, a lot of this stuff was came from me and my cousin Bobby talking. Uh, he A lot of the things that I just mentioned were his original uh, formula. He did a lot of other things that I don't do, and I do some of the things that he doesn't. But he really kind of put that formula in my head a good nice. amount of it nice so i definitely want to give credit where credit was due awesome and i do think it will continue to evolve yeah i mean it seems that uh that you leave it open for the individual at hand it's just not the same for everybody you know yeah and, so and it's a, and it's usually a three-month cycle so yeah. I'll, I'll just i'll close up with a little more here just to, so people can get an idea uh -huh. week one I, I break it up into months. So week one is the easiest week. You did all the, you'll do all the things I just said, but it's almost like this is too easy. Right. Week two, it's a little harder. Okay. You feel it a little more. You're almost like a little excited because you're actually noticing that you're doing more. Week three is the hardest week of the month. And it's like, okay, that kind of kicked my butt. Right. Uh -huh. Week four, you drop back. It's, a, it's not completely to week one again, but it's right. It's basically like an increase, and then you drop down halfway again. And it's pretty easy on that fourth week because we need to, we need these recovery weeks in order to train properly. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Even Harley in the video where he talked about cycling, he takes certain months off and backs off and does 10% of the training so that his oh, body wow. can properly recover, and then he can train hard when he needs to when mm -hmm. it's season. You don't train hard all year. So yeah. You don't get the best results unless yeah. you're doing like a medium level of performance. Totally. And that is something that I, that I'd never understood because <laughs> when I was in college, it was always just go, 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 go. Well, never you're rest, at an elite you know? level at that point. Yeah. Um, but still, like, I feel like I never took the time to like rest and, and the resting could have been just do doing lower weight you know, and not just going so all out and crushing myself. Yeah. And that's what I did for five straight years, six straight years, you know, yeah. just nonstop, just going all out. Right. And we will going cycle as hard as I can, you know, we'll cycle between the reps and the heavy as well as the weeks evolve. Yeah. So like, just like I said, week one through three, it's an incline and then a decline. 
The decline is because now week one is going to be a step up from the, uh, I'm sorry, week one of the new month is going to be a new step up. It's going to be right. a little harder again, but it's only going to be marginally harder than that original week. It's going to be about 10 to 15% harder. But then when you're on week two and you're on the second week, okay, that kicked my butt a little more. Yeah, and then right. week three, okay, that was a workout because I don't, I don't feel like it's good to kick someone's butt right away. They're going to be right. discouraged. They're going to get injured easily. You don't do that. So if people make it to week three, week three of the, I mean, I'm sorry. If you make it to month three and week three, and I'm probably confusing some of you. <laughs> it's, it's, I promise it's simple. But it was, basically, it's a 90-day program. When you get to that third week, that of the last month, that is your hardest day of that three months. Oh, wow. That's going to be like, okay, this is like your real like measuring of how far you've come in the last three months. Yeah. And then, of course, because that was such a hard week, the last week is going to be easier and you're going to have that recovery. Nice. Now, people usually from there continue to keep going because they're seeing the results. And now the program, the program gets completely restructured because now you have a foundation you're working with. Now yeah. it's, now it's still the same formula, but it's completely evolved. Now you're doing mm -hmm. more complex movements. You know, you're doing more complex warm ups. You're seeing more uh, flexibility Nice, and you can really get more fun with it. If you like to geek out on this stuff. So it's nice. an ever evolving thing. And the idea is to, constantly be on the up but it's not always ever going to be linear sometimes you're going to have two really easy weeks sometimes you're going to have two really hard weeks mm -hmm. and it always depends upon the goal as well some people just you know want to look good some people want to get actually really fit they want six-pack abs right they want to they want to have a big chest or you know whatever they want to have more curve they want to have better glutes and just just so you guys know it's it's so simple the problem is diligence yeah I don't, like, cause you described what you do for working out. I haven't been really doing pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been running around being crazy <laughs> and uh, being overwhelming myself you right. know, with my own problems. But I know that when I make it a priority, even when I was staying with you or even when I was with Cody and I was on the track, I, yeah. just, I loved it. And it's so easy to fall out of these things, but that's, what's so awesome about awesome about having a trainer or a coach. It's like, Right. You have some accountability without feeling guilty. It's like you invested mm -hmm. in yourself and you go from there. And I, I, I good. Uh, I was just going to say that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, my, my apologies for interrupting you there. Um, no, you're fine. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I actually forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it was about it was about diligence in working out. Diligence, consistency. That's always going to be the biggest factor. Totally. Um, yeah, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, my bad. <laughs> no, no, no. It's 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 all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, AJ, I, I gotta hire I gotta hire you as my coach. Yeah. Damn, dude. Well, um, uh, oh, that's what it was. Uh, it's it's nice having another person there by your side guiding you you know even when i do work out with somebody it is it is pretty fun it's enjoyable and i feel like you guys can motivate each other right. uh even though I, i'm pretty good at motivating myself and getting myself to go do x y and z but having someone else there is nice and yeah um even, especially even with, just because you can't always see your movement so yeah. you might have your elbows out a little bit and they need to be more in right just having someone be able being able to scooch that in and now it's a little harder but it's good for you right. that's always so undervalued totally uh even with calisthenics it would be so inspirational to have someone there with me being like all right let's let's get 500 in a day mm -hmm. all right let's get let's get 600 in the day you know right that's just that'd be next level yeah and the, and there's this stigma that unless someone is very very fit they don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. And it's like, look, yeah. at, look at any NFL yeah. coach, look at any hockey coach, right. uh, athletic trainers. N rarely are these people the peak physical position, right. position <laughs> but they know what they're talking about. Yeah. And, you know, you could have someone who's 300, uh, I don't know. So you can have someone who's not fit at all, but they know that they know good form. Yeah. Or they know that, you know, 
these types of workouts are good. So I think it's really important for people to realize that <laughs> I just think of the Eagles coach from like years ago. He was just like so yeah, Andy, giant. Andy Reid, he coaches the the uh Kansas City Chiefs now and he's still he's even more giant, but he's the Yeah, right. He, he's but, the but best he, coach in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't make money just by chance. Well, Maybe Bill, Bill, the opportunity okay. Maybe the opportunity comes because of oh people you know and whatever, but right. in able to in able to being able to sustain, you know, a job like that, it take you have to know somewhat of what yeah. you're freaking talking about. Exactly, you're exactly. never going to be a novice. I can't even I can't even lie, Jay. I was one of those guys who was saying like, oh my gosh, like I w- like, I mean I am too. I, yeah, I think like there's a good you get point a, to it. Yeah, like why sure. you get a trainer who's overweight? But yeah, I wouldn't I, say. <laughs> yeah, but then I thought like, okay, MP, well this person might be overweight, but what if they just love, what if they love teaching people how to work out, even though they don't do it themselves? What if that's what they love yeah. to do? What yeah. if they really are so knowledgeable about the subject, but they don't like working out or, or what yeah, if like they can, be. what if that's, what if they hate running? Yeah. And, but they can get people under a five minute mile or under a fourth. They can consistently get right. people under now no one gives it crap. Yeah. No one cares at all if you can do it. <laughs> if you can get them to do it, yeah, that's all they care about. Right. But some of that undermining <laughs> doubt is what keeps them from uh, getting involved with that. Yeah, totally. Because if uh, you know, let's say, let's just pretend I was three hundred pounds, and of course, who the heck would listen to me about losing weight? Right. But <laughs> if some woman came to me and I got her to lose eighty pounds. And then she told her friend, and I did it. It would just snowball into this is the guy that you go to. It's like, really? This is the guy? Right. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but, oh, he knows what he's talking about. Okay. We care. People care about the results. At right. first, yes. Uh, the image is very important. They're going to judge you in an instant and right. kind of analyze you. But the results are all people care about. And yeah. Going forward, working, you know, hopefully doing more personal training and those things, uh, getting a little more physical with people, which is more fun. I think that it's, it's very important for them to realize, I mean, it's very important for me to realize that I want to get them a result. I don't want them to just, I don't want to just give them my time because then it's like, you know, I worked out and see any results. I want them to feel as though it was not only worth it, they would do it again. Yeah. That's really respectable AJ. And that's great that you have that, that you had that mindset. (laughs) Um, uh, I, I did want to ask a question um since you are since you are a trainer and you've and you've been in the field and you've done some work with um some clients if someone is trying or not trying because let's not say that word that's a bad word to say to use if someone wants and desires to get a little fitter and mm-hmm. to start working out and to just start moving their body where do you think is the best place to start? It's, it's an amazing question. I also want to put it back to you just because mm-hmm. I did talk. I, I will answer first, but I want you to also touch on that. Yeah, totally. Because I want to know your perspective. But here's the thing. Some people are really sick. Some people are physically really mm-hmm. sick or they have arthritis or they have a lot of issues that really limit them. They really want it. They want to feel fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. But it's like a, a chicken and an egg type of thing. It's like, you have to get healthier in order to work out, but in order right. to get healthier, you have to work out. And it's like, what comes <laughs> right. first. Right. And you have to kind of wiggle your way sometimes using yeah. both to where, where you're at a steady point of, okay, you're getting into the groove of it. I know right. for myself, it's, it's one of the reasons why, especially when I was skinnier, especially when I was at my sickest, but even to this day, uh, it can be really challenging to consistently have these routines and workout protocols mm-hmm. simply because something like missing a night's sleep can profoundly oh affect me, not even just as a regular, not even just a regular person. Of course, that affects them. Right. But for me, with my hormonal insufficiency, with my adrenals and um, some of the stuff that I go through, it, it's it's exaggerated even more. It's mm-hmm. like a one night could be the equivalent to a, re- a normal person losing three nights. Right. Holy. And yeah, that's what it feels like to me. So it's easy when it's going well and then when yeah. it's really hard when you fall off and the momentum starts to go the other direction mm-hmm. and it's more important than ever to be able to do it but you want to be able to do it in a way that not only is sustainable but it helps 
uh, keep you from going into that burnout mode or overwhelming yourself. I know that I went and got some blood work done today and I do have, uh, like, because I was having some symptoms and some issues with headaches and just kind of like almost like a pressure in my head. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, I've had CAT scans and I've had different things done and it's very, very difficult for anyone to pinpoint, but I know that if I'm taking care of myself, it's so much easier. Right. And being on the road, like I've been and traveling around in Tennessee and staying with you, all these things are amazing. I love my time with all of you guys. And uh -huh. but it also just creates because I'm, I'm not in my own setting, you know, it just yeah. creates a little bit of that nervous tension. Right. And I want to hang out and I want to have fun and I don't want to <laughs> do all the, all the things. And it's so right now I'm almost like in the burnout mode myself. Right. So I would love to be running on the beach. and doing these things. <laughs> I just want people to relate. Like, you know, I, for me, I'm not at all where I want to be and I'm not perfect. So if you feel that way, if you feel like you're really struggling and you just, you, you want to do it, but you're having a hard time. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about yeah. a way to sustainably do this. And let's do that now. Like, I want to address your question now. So like we said, Walking is the best place to start. If you could just wake up, go for a walk. If you have to do it later, do it later. It's really hard to, to do it later because you get busy. Wake <laughs> up, walk around your block, walk around two blocks, whatever you can do. If you can do that every day consistently. Mm -hmm. You're going to notice a profound shift. Okay, let's say that you don't want to walk and you know it's too hot to bike and you hate going to the gym. There are hacks. There are things that we can do like Dr. Zach Bush has the four minute workout yep. that I truly do believe in that it's, it's difficult. If you're not someone who's very motivated, it can be difficult to consistently do it. But if you get excited about doing it, it's so easy. It's so time efficient. It's four, it's a four minute workout. It literally takes two minutes to do. And you do it three times a day. The, if you go and read the comments of this video, people are like, I can bike twice as long. I don't get winded. Uh, my Achilles feel like they're steel cables. This, this exercise oxygenates your brain, your kidneys, your organs. It uses all 16 major muscles in your body, your thighs, your shoulders, everything. The glutes. Yeah, it activates everything. Um, yeah. It's improving your posture. For the next four hours, consistently, you have more blood flow and oxygen going throughout your organs. And the, the point of it being three times a day is because you do it every four hours. And that way, even if you're sitting, you're still getting all these benefits. Everyone talks about smoking. I mean, uh, sitting is the new smoking. <laughs> if you're going to be sitting and you do stuff like this, it really pumps the lymph. It really gets oxygen. It really increases your metabolism. So you're burning fat for the next couple of hours. Nice. If you can make that a priority and you do that every day for a month, God forbid, three months or a year. Wow. I swear within a week, you feel stronger. Wow. You would probably get shredded to be honest. If you're built like me and it's not hard for you to, to, you know, get kind of shredded. Like if I worked out, I, I would easily. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I don't work out at all. <sighs> and if I were to do that, I would be really, really, you know, in good oh, shape. I, I can just, so for I the can people out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, it's a really good workout for people that are motivated, but they're just, they're time crunched. Right. This is like, this is the hack. Mm -hmm. I would do it every single day. If I wasn't, like I said, overwhelmed and having some head pressure issues and headaches and whatever. Right. But I, I think that that's an amazing place to start. I think that if you're really novice and you have the funds, you don't have to, you don't have to hire me at all. Hire a personal <laughs> trainer. Find a good one, though. Find someone that someone else recommends to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are garbage. A lot of them don't know what they're talking about. Right. Right. They charge you so much money. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, find someone who knows what they're talking about that you can listen to. Don't listen. Don't do it. Don't ask like a family member and you know, you're going to fight with them. <laughs> Not always good. Find someone that you can have good communication with. And that's so important. Let them know if you're overwhelmed, let them know if you're scared, let them know if you don't feel good. Mm -hmm. And if they don't adjust to you, the customer, they're not a good trainer. Yeah, exactly. And where would you, where would you start for someone? Awesome. Yeah. That was very, very well said, AJ, very motivational. I'm like, I'm fired up. Just listening to that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome stuff, my man. Awesome stuff. Um, now 
I don't know if I can match what you just said. <laughs> well, I do want to throw in, I just want to say I do have um, a little bit of a time thing. So if we could keep this for another, you know, five or 10 minutes, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be as efficient as possible here. I think the best place to start is asking yourself, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve here? Uh, if you want to be an Olympic squatter, if you want to be a marathon runner, if you want to be, uh, just have a better body, if maybe you are sick and you really do, uh, want to get healthier and you want to work out more, uh, maybe you're like me and you want to just be able to rip out as many reps as possible and, and pull ups, push ups, dips, you know, what are, what are your goals with your help? Maybe you want to be the best jump ripper. Maybe you want to be able to uh, be the best dancer or be as strong as possible with yoga. You know, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve with your body? What do you want to achieve with your workouts? Now, I definitely think, like AJ said, one of the best places to start for anybody in general, especially a novice, is just to, to start walking. You know, you can even start by going to the gym and getting a gym membership and even just walking on the treadmill and just watching what people are doing at the gym and seeing the kind of movements they're doing, seeing the exercises, uh, maybe even just talking to people at the gym. Cause that, that's what I do when I see guys doing pushups and pull-ups at the gym. I'll be like, yo, what's up, man? Like how long you been, how long have you been doing this? Like, like what's up, you know? And just, I'll just start picking their brain and I don't, I mean, I'm sure other people do that too, but I don't see it. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that I'm the only one who- Because they're not who, hungry enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh exactly, exactly. Um, but yeah, I definitely think um, just watching other people, getting to the gym and seeing them, and it's, it's just motivating to watch other people work out, you know, and- um, I do feel like the, the gym can sometimes be a tough place because I feel like people go to the gym who are really stressed out and it's like a big stress reliever. So they could pick up on some yeah. of that energy, but even, even still, what are your intentions? And I feel like if you have great intentions and you really want it bad enough, just going to the gym and walking on the treadmill and reviewing everyone is, is an awesome place to start. Um, yeah, being in that environment too, can really, feel like you almost like you feel like you're a part of it exactly like i feel much more motivated to get a workout in at the gym around other people than just doing it at my house alone yeah. although i will do that though yeah. um now if you don't if you don't if you're not really into walking and you don't want to do the four minute workout that aj said to do <laughs> i think even just stretching for 15 minutes a day is is awesome or possibly even doing some breath work and i know uh AJ and I talk about this and Wim Hof talks about it. Uh, just the breath is, 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 is everything, you know? I mean, obviously if we don't have our breath, we're not alive. And yeah. I, I learned this from AJ just saying how like doing the breath work can really improve your circulation and your blood flow. And that alone can just help your body get moving and get going, you know? So um, doing some stretching, doing some breath work, I think could be a great place to start. If you really are having struggles getting to the gym or wanting to move your body, you know, just cause some people, they just, they just want to be stationary and I'm the opposite. I want to be, I want to be moving. <laughs> mm. I, I, I gotta, I, I honestly got to start being stationary a little more um, and slow down a little bit, but Live yeah. It up. I, what's up? <laughs> Move, move for the both of us. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think um, stretching and breath work is, is, an, is another great, uh, a great place to start. And then um, even just jogging and is awesome too. I know like it, it, it's, it's just like a little faster paced walk. Um, I think jogging could even have some beneficial results, beneficial results too. And I even learned that from AJ because he said that he, uh, <laughs> I'm speaking for you a little bit here, but um, Go on. let's see how he, good you he remember. Was just, <laughs> he was just telling me the story about how uh, I think it was in Colorado. Was it? 
when you started this or no, was it back in New Jersey? Tennessee. Um, but he, it was in Tennessee. Oh, in Tennessee. Uh, you were jogging for like two hours a day. Just like not even hard. It's not even like it's hard running. You're just like, it's almost like a, a slightly fast paced walk. That's what it yeah, was. Exactly. And that right, that right there is like another step above the walking. So doing that can definitely be better, can be huge too. If you're really, yeah, I want to chi- I want to chime ahead. in just yeah. to clarify it real quick. So basically I was interested in getting into ultra running and ultra running is anything over a marathon. You know, I'd read born to run and getting really excited. And I met an ultra marathoner who told me, listen, you're never going to run your way. If you're, if you're, if you haven't been running consistently a lot, a lot of mileage, you're not going to run your way to an ultra at first. Yeah. Walk as much as you possibly can. If you have to go to the store, even if it's around the block, walk there, walk more. So like I said, you can build that strength in your joints and, ten- and tendons and stuff so that it's safer and healthier for when you start to run farther. Nice. So when I moved to Tennessee, I was doing those runs slower pace. Yeah. Like a fast walk, but my, it was really focused about my form, just getting perfect form. And by the end of that six months, my feet were like, you could hit them with sledgehammers. They were so <laughs> strong. Wow. I could run 10 miles barefoot. No problem. Nice. And my feet were just like, I would go on these Hills and like have no issues because I set the foundation for my legs. Now they're strong. And now I put in that work of that slow, boring, not exciting running. Yeah, right. And now when I train hard and I go fast, I don't break down. A lot right. of people try to go fast and then they pull something. No, right. my legs were concrete. Nice. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, AJ. Yeah. The last statement that I wanted to make here. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, um, I've been in, in the workout game the exercise game for a while. So I do have some muscle on me. So I am, uh, I, uh, and I I know my body pretty well, um, but I am able to do some more repetitions every day. So, so like doing a hundred reps of pushups and even a hundred reps of bodyweight squats a day, it hasn't been too taxing and my body has been able to handle it. Um, But I know my limits too. I know that if I am feeling some sort of pain up in my chest area, especially after doing like more of a push day, more of a push up day. Um, then I'll, I'll do like 10 reps of pushes. I won't go crazy hard, right. but, uh, coming back to the original question that I asked, uh, even just doing one push up a day, doing one squat a day, doing one lunge a day on each leg and then working your way up. And it doesn't even have to be like, Oh my gosh, I had to do this today, you know, or whatever I fail. But just, I mean, any little movement and uh, you don't even have to go crazy with it. Start small. Um, It could be sit-ups, you know, it could be um, some other kind of ab workouts. But I think even just taking it small and taking it slow and just working your way up, I think, I think you can see great results doing that. And I didn't just start with a hundred pushups. Like, I mean, I've all, I've been doing pushups for the past three years, you know, yeah. Um, I, I even said, I was like, I'm going to do 50 for the first two weeks and then I'm going to go in or the first month and then I'm going to go do a hundred. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, I think doing, uh, small pushups, not small pushups, um, but like one push up, and then the next day do two, you know, and then come back and do one, you know, or if you can't do pushups, get on your knees and do pushups, but even that, or yeah. even just doing 10 a day, do 10 pushups a day. You know, do 10 squats a day, 10 lunges a day. Uh, I think that's another great place to start. So yeah, progress, progress, yeah. just build that diligence and you will see results. Exactly. So I hope that was uh, beneficial. I hope you guys learned. I bit. loved it. Yeah. That was know, a, what did you think? I yeah, can't wait I, to watch. Yeah. I thought that was an, op- I thought that was a phenomenal episode. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, if you got this far in episode seven of the Hungry People podcast, we are very appreciative of it. Uh, my name is Michael Patrick Buckley. and uh, Thank you for listening. Uh, stay up, be great, and always keep it Honda, baby. And my name is AJ. <laughs> <laughs> and stay hungry. I love it, baby. I love it. Awesome. Peace. Have a great night, guys. Props. Or have a great day whenever you, if you listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>